for scenario one, uh, you uh, didn't put in the preseason work and now you've realized um, you've got plenty of weeks ahead of you. How can I get fit? So you, you, your thing that you want to make uh, take into account the most is majority of footballs, no matter what level, AFL, state league, or community level, you're going to be getting the majority of your Ks uh, that you cover in a week on game day. So roughly, let's say, if you uh, cover 10 Ks um, in a typical game, you're probably doing two training sessions a week. One's a bit lighter, maybe it's three to four Ks, and another session's um, more your main training session around five to six, let's say. So that's 50% of your weekly 20K is coming from the game. The other 10 is coming from your football training sessions. So how can we, um, in a smart and collect and um, deliberate manner, get some fitness training in that's not going to overload you and cause injury. Can you get faster in season? Uh, obviously, this will depend on where you're at with your journey, but um, I would like to think if you focus on it uh, and you built up some good speed exposure in pre-season that you could hit some max velocities and, you sh and some of you in the training squad should definitely. Um, certainly the squads that I've looked after or the athletes that I train individually uh, or look after their online program um, hit max velocities in season because they're, they're tracking it for the first time. So whether you're using a smartwatch, GPS unit, whatever it might be, on your main training session a week, you should be hitting above 90%, uh, every fortnight above 95% max velocity. Uh, and you'll find by just simply adding in that measure, um, what we measure, we tend to improve. So there'll be some PBs that you hit maybe in the game, maybe in training, but by measuring it throughout the year, you'll no doubt hit a new PB. So yes, you can get fitter. Uh, faster, sorry. Hopefully you're also improving the efficiency of your movement as well. So we don't want to just be building a better engine if we haven't got the handling of it. What are the best conditioning prescriptions in season to maximize fitness and fatigue? I think that's where the prescription, yes, but also the plan of your schedule for the week. Um, so making sure that you're not doing a lot of your heavy fitness training at the end of the week. Uh, we want to put in the work at, at the start of the week where we're the furthest away from the game. Typically, footballers, where you're looking at heart rate variability or their jump testing, they're pretty well recovered three days after a game. Um, so if we're getting some good training stimulus in uh, and some light movement day post of a game, they're not just sitting on the couch, but they're going for like a light walk or water-based recovery, um, whatever it is, some active recovery. Um, then day two, maybe you're getting a bit of a light jog in or you're doing some light skills, some craft work. So you're getting the body going, you're waking it up, some strength training. We know is really good for, for upregulating your, your testosterone. How can players manage fatigue in season? That's probably just answered in that question there. So really focus on your recovery day post of a game um, and two days post of a game. Then we want to get in good, solid, hard training in in the gym on day three. And then as the week gets closer and closer, is where we want to increase the speed and the intensity on field. And that is all part of the recovery. So it's not just uh, time and being passive, getting a massage, there's lots of active um, recovery to get you into that recovery mindset. How does training change from rookies to veterans? I think veterans, we back themselves in. They've got lots of experience. So um, there should be more of a discussion, two-way sort of conversation. With rookies, we want to be um, making sure we're exposing them to different methods, um, getting that feedback so they're thinking about what's best for them. Um, but ultimately, that's where structure is a bit more important for a rookie compared to a veteran. Latest in sports science uh, and trends in AFL. Uh, so from a conditioning point of view, that's where we're a lot more individualized these days. So maximum aerobic speed, usually from a 2K time trial, is prescribed over pre-season. That's uh, a little bit less um, relevant when we're in season because we're not doing as much aerobic conditioning, but hopefully you're still getting some exposures. Um, we can also use obviously the GPS to track uh, what's relevant for their, for their game. Um, so that's something that we're constantly looking at, especially when we're um, conditioning them over pre-season and we're maintaining their um, fitness exposures in season. So that's where the bye weeks are really important and they've got individual game loads that they're trying to hit. Um, so there's a lot of objectivity that's uh, coming into play with their uh, conditioning um, in the AFL.